Hi, my name is Anel Flores, and this is Una Platica. more oh, well there's never one answer you know um, to start I, I think it's events in my life um, observations um, in my life I grew up in South Texas uh, between San Antonio and and the RGV so I, I grew up being here during the school year being over there in the summer born in the valley I grew up in a world that was gorgeous trees and birds and and lemon trees and lime trees and naranjas and grandmas in their colorful batas. And so I like to say that part of me becoming an artist and a writer is just being immersed in the beauty of what is culture, um, what is language, what is also um, watching the women in my life float around like these badass um, grandmas and tias and moms and sisters and um, leaders of this family that I, that I have. And I'd also like to say I'm an artist and a writer because those events also are traumatic. There are trauma, there's trauma that comes in those moments as well. And that happened uh, when I was outed um, as a queer person by someone that I didn't give permission to out me. And they outed me to my parents. And that you know, kind of created this like beautiful story of my family to kind of crumble to no fault of theirs, right, but to homophobia that poisons our bodies and poisons our hearts. And so at that moment when the homophobia took over my parents, unfortunately, um, we separated for many years, our relationship. And uh, I tried to find a place to tell that story or tried to find a place for that to live. And in order for me to live, in order for me to breathe, in order for me to continue moving forward, um, was to, I had to tell that story. And so I started to journal it. People, my therapist would be like, journal, 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 draw, draw, draw. And so I started to do that. And it was a way that I could keep the secret without being, um, you know, uh, hurt or in danger as a queer person being out. I, I could hide as a queer person in my art and my painting. And um, that, that started it. And then, you know, 30 years later, I am here today. And now my work is like super queer and super Chicana and super out and super nude and super free and super open. And that's the development of the relationship I had with my family and my culture and my queerness. So that's, that's how and where the origin, I guess, of my artwork has come from. I definitely consider myself a Chicana artist. Um, during that time, um, the year after I was outed, I went to college. Uh, happily, luckily, thank God, I wasn't, thank the universe, thank the goddess, um, because my best friends were going to college and I didn't, have necess I didn't have a safe or comfortable place to live at the time when my parents and I were in our outs. And so I dormed, went to college, and I had this incredible opportunity um, to see a class on the roster at Incarnate Word called Chicana or Chicana Literature. And I was like, Chicana Literature, I've heard about that. And, and I want to do that. And I'm, I'm already writing poems. You know, I had these great, like Carmen Tafoya and Naomi Nye and Sandra Cisneros, folks in the community that were supportive of my writing already. And so I knew they were identifying as Chicana. I identified as a Mexican-American at that time and didn't know about the politic or the movimiento. And so I took this badass class with um, Dr. Hector Perez um, from Incarnate Word, and it was like 1995, and he gave us like a 30-page packet. It was just like the timeline from like the beginning of time, like the Toltecs, the Olmecs, all the way to today or to then, and the literature, the books, the movements, the artwork, the, the protests, the, the women, the queers, the queens, the drag queens, the folks, all the movements. I mean... Hector Perez didn't shy away from anything. He told us everything that happened on that timeline. I still have it at home. And I remember thinking, oh my God, that's me. I'm doing this artwork. I'm doing this writing that is about telling that story. That's about filling the gaps of the story that isn't being told. That's about South Texas. That's about the valley. That's about language. It's about our body. It's about identity. And so being a Chicana for me is like full all the way through because at that moment I could be all of those things. And I learned about Chicana with an X. You know, I learned about Chicana with an E at the end, Chicane. I learned about Chicanex too. Like there's so many different ways. And I say Chicana with an X, X I, not C H I, right? So you, I start to develop that and, and start to make it part of my identity 
more so for political reasons and also more so for for reasons of preservation of the palabra, preservation of the of the palabra that has been created for us to exist. And so yes, I, I consider myself a Chicana artist. Santo Cultural Atzlan is extremely important to the community. It has been, um, it is, well, first of all, it's been here. It's not going anywhere. It's been standing strong. It has been fostering relationships between artists. It invites artists, it invites writers, it invites thinkers, it invites community members. It allows access to community to see art. And it not only that, it's so important because it's beyond just gallery walls here. It's about knowing that when you put something on the wall, it's about making change in the world. And Centro Cultural doesn't put things on the wall for the sake of just beauty, beauty to, to exist only as beauty. But if it's beauty, it's because it's beauty, because beauty is change. And so Centro has a mission and vision that really is around bringing in people that are thinking about how to change, how to make the world more just, how to make us see ourselves more for identity. Um, and it's important because there aren't spaces for Chicana, Chicane, Chicanex um, authors and writers and poets and performers. There are not enough spaces. And Centro is, has been providing that space. And we feel safe here and we feel happy here. And so it's very important to our community. Oh, I love the mole throwdown. Ooh, yes, mole throwdown at the centro is like, ah, oh, that's my love of food. That's one part of me. Um, I always love what they do during Women's History Month. They're always like, all the programs, all the artists, they're just like bringing things, bringing music, bringing canto, bringing so much during Women's History Month. And I especially love, um, which I was a part of, I don't know what year, but I'm sure it's in the archives, but... I was the lead artist for the Guadalupe, Our Lady Guadalupe show in December of some year, a long, long time ago, here at Centro. But that's also one of my favorite shows because um, art exhibits, because it is around so much programming, and then the the music, the musicos that are here, and everything is so beautiful. And because Our Lady Guadalupe, um, they are an ident, they are, I want to say, a being, an energy of many meanings for many people in our culture. And so it's in the culture, in the world, not just the, the Chicanex community, but in all communities, the Our Lady or the Virgen de Guadalupe or whatever you want to call her. So for some of us, she's an angel. For some of us, she's a, our grandma. For some of us, she's the person we pray to. For some of us, we, you know, there's other religious ties. She's cultural, she's sexual, she's sensual. She's all these things. And so that show, that exhibit, just it brings artists to show the different ways that we identify with her and we create new relationships with, with, uh, with our identity. So I love that show also. Ah, uh, what don't people know about me? Ah, uh, you know what they might not know about me? And I'm gonna say it because I'm here on Fredericksburg in San Antonio like two blocks from the Paraíso Paleta store. And that's that my favorite food in the universe is a good, cold, frozen paleta de agua de fresa. And just like the way it just like drips and, and it's delicious and it's soft. And, and I'm saying all that, the reason why it's important for you to know that is because it's super queer and I'm a queer artist. And so eating a paleta is like everything for me. And um, and it reminds me of childhood and adulthood and sensuality and lust and love and desire and and um, and culture and uh, that's why that's really special to me. It brings all those things together when um, in my body when I eat a paleta. That's something nobody knows about me. Although I did paint many paletas in my artwork, so if you looked at the history of my work, you will see paletas melting, paletas being licked, paletas being used for different things. You'll see them. There's like little clues. Ask yourself why you're making the art. And ask yourself all the time. Ask yourself every few weeks, why am I doing this? Why am I an artist today? Why am I making this art? Why do I want to wake up for me? Why do I want to wake up at 4.45 in the morning before anyone wakes up to only wake up with the birds, to only make art? Why am I doing that? Ask yourself that question 
and make sure you're still doing that when you are making that art. Make sure you're actually pushing that art because of the reason you're doing it. Just have a relationship with yourself. Um, a career in art is a career in art. It's, um, it means you're going to move, you're going to push, you're going to take yourself places. You're going to go and talk to Malena at Centro. You're going to go and talk to Graciela at the Esperanza. You're going to go and talk to people. You're going to present yourself. You're going to be all those things. And, um, and be ready because once you share yourself, your whole soul and your whole spirit, and it's going to be beautiful, they're going to want more. So be ready and know that you're on your path and you believe in it. In Mujeres Marcharan 2022, um, it is my second edition of the piece. And in 2020, I started the work um, with the idea of, um, of connecting our generations. I, I really love and I admire so much my elders and those who have come before me, those who have paved a way for the work that I do as an artist and a writer. And so this piece is a tribute to the artists, the writers, the thinkers, the activists, the mothers, the grandmothers who've, who've made change, who've created change in their way. Um, and so in this work, Mujeres Marcharan 2022, which is the second edition, um, what I've done is I have created an image that has three young girls um, holding on to a banner, three young women, and uh, they're holding on to a banner. And those three women actually are specifically from a photo I took at the Women's March, I want to say in about 2005 here in San Antonio. I took that photo and then I drew the photo, the, the young women holding the banner, and I decided that I would draw women from San Antonio and from South Texas that have made an impact on community, um, be it the queer community, the feminist community, the Chicanx community, the black community, the indigenous community. And I'm drawing images of those these women and non-binary and um, gender fluid folks that have made that impact. I'm drawing them as well after the, these people have passed away and left us and they are now in the spirit world. So these, this is a living tribute, this piece. And um, this, in this particular edition, I added Maria Ibarra, who was um, a director and actor and theater teacher in San Antonio and activist and mother and so many other things. So she's added here as well. And so this piece talks about connecting generations in San Antonio, making sure we remember our elders, make sure we honor our elders and make sure we honor our young women and our young people that are making change. So it's just make, and doing that through the fire of, of healing through the fire of our spirit world. And so that's what Mujeres Machada is about. Uh, my book Empanada, published with Gorima Press, is a coming of age um, collection of vignettes that uh, talks about a lesbiana growing up in South Texas and San Antonio and the RGV and um, her relationship with the women in her life. So her relationship with her grandmother, her sister, her mother, um, and her lovers. And it's a coming of age, so it, it's, it's funny, it's sexy, it's sensual, it's a little bit traumatic, it's uh, very rewarding. It's, um, I, I, I had a grandmother tell me once, I don't know if I want to have sex or eat after this, she told me after hearing Empanada. And uh, so the work is, is deeply sensual, deeply cultural, um, and deeply queer. And, uh, and, and that's what it's about.